What's going on, you crazy bastards? You're back here with Rob Kimball from SonsOfWrestling.com for a TNA Impact Wrestling review, and it's the EC3 show. He's in charge. He comes on out, and uh, he's he's in charge to book all the matches for the night, and he is just having a goddamn blast. This whole show, it's hilarious. It's fun shit. Matt Hardy, though, comes out, and he wants a goddamn title shot because... Ethan Carter's putting up the belt three times tonight. He's going to do a gauntlet. That's the way we're rolling. And, uh, well, uh, it's too bad, Matt. <laughs> you are already have a match tonight in a tag team match against the Dirty Heels. It's too bad Jeff had to go and break his leg, so you're on your own. So, we get a goddamn pretty good match. Matt's rolling good, but in the end, you got Bobby Roode holding the, hand, the uh, leg of Matt Hardy and uh, as he went for a suplex, but... Austin Aries landed on top, got the pin, the Dirty Heels win in heelish fashion as they should. Awesome shit. Then we move on to um, the Rising. They come on out, they're disbanded, they're done, they're finished. And uh, Drew Galloway puts out a, a great promo here, how he's going to stand up and continue and move on and uh, continue the fight for pro wrestling. And it's a heartfelt little speech here, and Ethan Carter's on commentary, just a chuck. Well, he... he it's hilarious. He's doing this whole cry thing. Oh my god. It's hilarious. Ethan Carter is having so much goddamn fun. It's great. It's awesome. So um, that is the end of that. Drew, uh, you know, he ends up getting a match because uh, Ethan Carter says just like in any fashion when a faction breaks up you end up taking on the uh, a new faction of another team that you didn't ever compete against so he has a match against the revolution and uh, well <laughs> he has no tag partners so now it's a three on one but in the end Drew, Gall or, yeah, Drew Galloway ends up p picking up the win here because you got uh, Koya and Abyss they can't get on the same page together uh, Abyss needs to control Koya, Koya don't really want to listen. Anyway, Drew Galloway takes out Manic, and that is that. Stand up, man. <laughs> then you have Mr. Anderson versus Bram. And, uh, well, this goes a little back and forth. And uh, Anderson's typical fashion, the, uh, the face gets a little bit better of Bram. But in the end, Bram throws a chair at Mr. Anderson, taking him out, getting DQ'd. And that is that. But Brand does not give no shits here. And then he calls for the uh, mic to come down. Uh, they say he wants it dropped so he can come up. He drags Anderson up there. And he's just yelling in the mic, banging it over his head. Ends up splitting Anderson open. So we've got blood. That should make all fans happy, right? And uh, Brand's standing strong, standing tall. That's it. And I'm a big fan of Bram. So, hey, DQs are okay. Then we have... Um, Jesse Goddard's versus Robbie E in a holy shit street fight. Robbie E turned it up to about 12. I've, usually he's resting about five and a half. This guy brought the fight, but in the end with uh, Jesse, holy shit. Puts him underneath the chair, does the Adonis Crab. Robbie E passes out. That's the match. Jesse picks up the win here. I just see this uh, feud continuing on and on and on. Probably about four more matches before something crazy happens and one can move on to another feud. But this was great. I was uh, pretty impressed with Robbie and Jesse Goddard. He's a big son of a bitch anyway. Um, he's definitely, uh, he's a monster. So anyway, good things. And it's good to see that this, uh, their whole bromance group thing, once it broke up, they actually capitalized on it and it was badass, which they should have done that with uh, Bobby Roode, James Storm a little more than they did. But hey, they're doing it here. Then we have Jeff Jarrett talking about the old cross promotion with TNA and 13 other companies. He never thought TNA would be part of it. And he wants to bring that uh, King of the Mountain championship and defend it amongst all of these other companies. So that's pretty cool. Good to see. And um, in the end, wow, we'll, we'll get to that Dixie Carter situation. So um, AC3 now has his uh, gauntlet start. But uh, first, first opponent, his first opponent the day he stepped in this company, Nor Furnham, easily one percenter. Then he wants to take on Shark Boy, takes him out no problem. And then Kurt Angle comes out with a rematch clause. He wants his match tonight. So yeah, it looks like that's going to happen. Then we have Lashley versus Tyrus. And uh, 
Tyvis put up a pretty good fight here, but in the end, Lashley with the spear taking him out, and we get blessed with the beautiful Velvet Sky uh, against Madison Rain, which she's boring, but hey, okay, little fight here. But uh, Velvet's new attitude is awesome. New attire is awesome, so I'm good with it. A lot of people hate her wrestling, but hey, she's out there looking goddamn fine, so hey, works for me. And she hits the stunner and takes out Madison Rain, no problem. And it was funny because Madison Rain said she belongs in the crowd, not in the ring. And she just chucked her outside of the ring anyway. <laughs> that was great shit. Good for Velvet, fuck yeah. Then the main event, Kurt Angle versus EC3. This is gonna happen. Carter, he keeps uh, teasing he's gonna get counted out, but he keeps getting back into the ring. And then finally, Kurt Angle, this was EC3's champ. He needs to be booked a little bit stronger than this, goddammit. So anyway, Kurt Angle goes to lock in the ankle lock, and uh, EC3 punches the ref. <laughs> so he, uh, but then he gets dropped down. Uh, uh, Stifler comes running in, calls for the bell because of the DQ for, for punching the ref, Hebner, and hey, that's that. Um, but Kurt Angle, we all know, was going to get neck surgery, so it's not like he was going to win, but why couldn't he goddamn lost to EC3 clean, or even in a goddamn decent match, but not this little cat and mouse type situation, book the man a little stronger, he's a goddamn monster. EC3's a good guy, he's hilarious, awesome on the mic, good in the ring, he can wrestle, yes. And then we have the blessing of Dixie Carter, she's back, and uh, Ethan Carter will not let her talk, this is all going to his head, I see where they're going with the storyline, and she tells him that she, well, she has to take the micro and let her talk, and she says, I turn into, you know, the powers, what happens, it turns you into a different person, and I don't even recognize that person I was last year. And she says, you need to fucking change, and you need to respectfully um, wrestle, defend that championship, not, you know, this little weasel way he's going about this. So, uh, then she does say that I'm not in power, somebody does need to be in power, but it's not me, and it's not you. But she doesn't tell us who. So is it Jeff Jarrett? Goddamn, this whole big master plan that he had when he left TNA? Was this all part of it? God damn it, I said it last year. I think that it was, but you know, that never came out. Came out. It never happened. That's it. So maybe it is now? Maybe. Jeff Jarrett ends up running everything? No shit. And Eli's coming for that championship. Haha, <laughs> yes. And uh, he wants to just take out Jeff Jarrett. So, hey, lots of shit going on with TNA Global Force Wrestling. I don't know what the hell's going on, but we're going to find out. I think they say July 22nd at the live impact taping. We're going to get a lot more information, so look forward to that. And look forward to going to sonsofwrestling.com, clicking on the t-shirts, and buying some badass t-shirts. You can get that now for $5 off any order over 30 bucks. So go ahead, do yourself a favor, and get some cool-ass t-shirts. This is just one for the show. If you want to rock it, go ahead. But there's millions of others. Hell yes, and I'll catch you guys next time.